Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to feel better, move better, have greater health, more energy, less depression and anxiety, and get rid of nagging aches and pains once and for all, then do we have the show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Norman Shealy, health pioneer, visionary, best-selling author, creator of the TENS, founder of the American Holistic Medical Association, co-founder of the American Board for Scientific Medical Intuition with Carolyn Miss, president of Holos Institutes of Health. He's treated over 30,000 patients with chronic pain and depression and is the author of Living Bliss, major discoveries along the holistic path. Chances are, if you've ever sought holistic health care, then you've been touched by his work. Today, we'll talk about many of his greatest findings, how they can benefit you, and ways you can feel better, overcome chronic pain, and get your greatest body back. That plus, we'll talk about what happened at Finehorned, Bolo ties, why his dad wouldn't let him play football, Dr. John <laughs> Elliotson, <laughs> gotcha, <laughs> copper pyramid, pyramids, telomeres, and Tesla coils, a Navajo labyrinth, and what in the world is an electrete. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have some fun. So welcome to the show, Norm. Are you ready to shine? I am ready, Michael. <laughs> Woohoo! So before we dive right into things, I've got to ask, why don't you like chihuahuas? Well, they remind me of little barking rats, <laughs> you know. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and what kind well, my, of dogs do you have now? I have a German Shepherd and yeah. a Blue Heeler from Australia. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you were saying your mom and chihuahuas? Oh, my mother raised chihuahuas for many, many, many years. She always threatened to give us one, but I <laughs> thank heaven never did. So you have a farm now? 256 acres. And uh, your wife used to raise Appaloosas there, is it? 40 some odd years we raised Appaloosas, yes. Wow. Do you still ride? I don't. And the reason I don't is the greatest karma of this life. I don't know if you picked that one up. But in 1995, mm -hmm. I was paralyzed. I didn't have quite a near-death experience. <laughs> it would have been if it had gone any further. Um, uh, someone from a past life came back, and I'm talking about several hundred years ago past life, to get even with me for having him murdered back then and jerked my neck, dislocated my spine, and I was paralyzed. And so I'm fused from here to here in my neck. Wow. And I'm happy to be walking. I still have some clumsiness. You know, I don't dwell on it. But if I would have another accident with my neck, I would be stop breathing, which would be fine, because if I was there, I just didn't stop breathing anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, no, I do, I do do 90 minutes of exercise every day, but nothing vigorous. So I'm, I'm kind of ooga boogered at the moment. Usually I don't talk about like my past life regressions during the show. <laughs> but in a past life regression, I had, I was on, on a horse and got speared or bayoneted or something in my leg um, and fell off the horse to my death where I do now have a birthmark in that spot. So I'm ooga boogieing here. <laughs> right. No, no, it, it happens. I mean, um, I would say this lifetime mm -hmm. has been about the fifth chakra for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a very strong will. Came in wanting a stronger will <laughs> and recognized that although I have a strong will, I can't impose it on other people. <laughs> well, that, that makes some sense. So let's, let's talk about another strong person before we jump into the medical side of things. Would you mind sharing with us about your wife, Charity? Yes. The most important, wisest thing I ever did in this life. Uh, I'm serious. Oh, you know, I believe you. You meet people like this. Interestingly... Uh, when I moved to Boston for my neurosurgical residency, I knew only one person. We'd interned together. Yeah. And so we got an apartment together, and he was dating Shardy. And I realized very quickly that I was jealous. And he was Jewish. And although he was not Orthodox, I knew his parents were. Mm -hmm. So after a while, I said, okay, David, uh, you'll never marry that girl, because I knew he'd never marry a shikster. But I might. I'd like you to stop dating her. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so he did. He did. He said, I couldn't date her for a month mm -hmm. after he stopped, you know, hands off. So I started calling her every night. Of course, nobody thought to tell Shardy. And, but on my birthday, December 4th mm -hmm. in 1958, we had our first date and we were engaged on, De on January 10th. Wow. And we had 52 blissful years. And 
part of that was our life of 40 of some out of those years raising Appaloosa horses. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, you call her in the book the most conscientious person you've ever met. What does that mean? Conscientious means organized and responsible. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, she was the archetype of a Virgo. Yeah. And the Virgo personality is extremely organized. I have a friend who's married to Virgo. He says, I don't dare get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. The bed would be made when I get back. <laughs> and, but Shardy wasn't like that in that way. But no, no little detail ever escaped her. Mm -hmm. and, and unequivocally, I attribute my success in life to the stability that she gave me for those 52 years. Always supportive, always there, and always helping to keep me organized. I'm thinking of my wife, Jessica, who's the producer of this show, and, and our good friend, Hendrik, one of our, our groomsmen at the wedding, who said, dude, Michael, you were nowhere without her. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. And, and I could tell you, if I had not, and here's one of the interesting things, mm -hmm. within one to two days of her death, I made the most important discovery of my life. Basically, I suddenly realized that we, that one of the circuits that I had already worked with mm -hmm. should produce oxytocin. And oxytocin is the love hormone, the, you know, the bonding hormone. And so very quickly, I would not even had this idea about oxytocin before that. And I found that when I stimulated the circuit I call the ring of air, it raised oxytocin. And it turns out that oxytocin is deficient in every known psychological emotional disorder. And, of course, I really needed a little boost of oxytocin uh, Understatement. for that year after, especially that first year uh, after Shardy's death. That is, that is beyond fascinating because I'm thinking that may even be, correct me if I'm wrong, a cause of death for spouses is the oxytocin level going so low you're not, <laughs> you're not going to be generating any of it after your spouse has passed on? In, in the average person, the death of, of a spouse is the greatest stress that can happen. Mm -hmm. And so fortunately, I did discover air bliss, and that made me then think, well, okay, then we can do this with all the other rigs too and save an hour a day. <laughs> So I want to jump into those. Before I do that, I want to kind of go, go through a little background information or a little, little background history on things. Um, how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, no, 83. You're 83. And you but, know I, you got, but I feel 26. And you got a stress test a few years ago at 80 that showed you were 26. Exactly. It, exactly what they said in the, <laughs> in the readout. So what's your secret? Attitude. Mm -hmm. That's the secret to everything. You know, I can, you know, you know, one of my favorite statements is, I did not have the courage in this life to choose abusive parents. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is aware of that concept, but I do think we choose our parents for whatever reason. And I had two of the most nurturing parents I can imagine. And for that reason, I grew up without any doubt about being okay. Never had a, I, I don't think I've ever felt that I was better than anybody. I just, I just, I'm okay. And that has allowed me when I'm growing up to concentrate on what I wanted from age four to, to be a physician. And at age 16, I knew I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did is I, I really like the brain. <laughs> I understand the brain. I'm the only one I know who loved neuroanatomy, which is one of the most complex subjects in the world. But I find the brain and its function and the mind the most fascinating thing we have. Why, would you say? <laughs> well, I consider the physical body mm -hmm. the most extraordinary physical creation in the world. Okay. You know, we have this ability with our fingers and our speech to do things that no other known animal can do. Mm -hmm. But the mind can go beyond that. We can go out of body. Yep. We can create new concepts out of the blue. And, uh, and, and the mind to me is just extraordinary. Now, if, on the other hand, you did not 
feel okay as a child, mm-hmm. did not feel wanted, then you can go through life essentially withdrawing, moaning, groaning, being depressed, anxious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And unbelievably, I think 80% of people fall into that category. They're not functioning optimally because they don't think well enough of themselves. That makes some sense, and that also loops back to oxytocin, that they probably weren't getting enough of it as a child. Or during, even when they were in the uterus. If the, if the child was unwanted, mm-hmm. and the mother is pregnant, and especially if she's not married, it leaves her, those nine months, worrying and debating whether to get rid of the child, whether to, you know, and so the child doesn't get the nurturing day-to-day encouragement then at birth Mm -hmm. if she's even if she was ecstatic about being pregnant if she's put to sleep it blocks that huge surge of oxytocin that should come to the baby during delivery and finally if there is a major trauma in the first seven years of life okay it can block oxytocin forever in that person so you talk about in the book quality and quantity of nurturing before seven but also Trauma. Now, what is an example of a major trauma? Divorce of the parents. Mm -hmm. 50% of marriages today, not all of them before age seven, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And having worked with 30,280 some odd people who were depressed, I can tell you it's extremely common for them to tell me it began in early childhood. And then you begin to pin it down. Well, my parents were fighting, or my, you know, and then, and there it is. And. The nice thing about it, however, is even if it got blocked from conception or by age seven, we can restore it in most people. That's the good news. (laughs) A year and a half ago, Mm -hmm. I had one of my latest research projects I was doing. One man, 58 years of age, came in, zero oxytocin in his blood. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, his oxytocin was 10.6. The normal range is 5 to 18. The same day, a woman in her mid-50s came in with zero. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, hers was 5.8, so it's at least within the normal range. And we have done this in hundreds and hundreds of people. Autism, ADHD, depression, anxiety, those are the big ones. It is so simple, so safe. It works in most people. And this is uh, sacred rings you're talking about. Yes, and this particular ring is the one I call the ring of air. Now, interestingly, when I received this, Mm -hmm. I was told that it was, quote, for creating, quote, simultaneity of thought or holographic thinking, which to me means intuition. That's what intuition is. I'm also thinking the hemisphere is now talking with each other and being Holographic thinking. Yeah. Exactly. And interestingly, my intuition originally picked up that it would raise neurotensin, and it does. Neurotensin is another one of these wonderful hormones. It's what I call the, oh, who cares? <laughs> <It's not laughs> the, the, ah. it's, yeah, you know, go away. Uh, and, and that's what neurotensin is. It is a neuroleptic mm-hmm. and fascinating synchronicity, which I think is one of the great things in the world, too. I've never done drug research on people, Mm -hmm. but back in 1965, I did some of the original animal research on ketamine, the first artificial human-made neuroleptic, and it does relieve pain. Mm -hmm. So when I discovered the ring of air, and I went, well, okay, it's going to make us a little more intuitive. But then five years ago, all of a sudden, I knew about oxytocin. It turns out that when neuro... Tensin is released, it also releases oxytocin. Beautiful. So let's, let's back up a little bit so that people can get an idea what that is, but also a little bit of your background of how you came here, which is you went from, be, from neurosurgery, you went into pain management. Is that right? That is correct. And the reason is during my neurosurgical residency at Mass General Hospital, the Mecca, I thought what we were doing was barbarian. Mm-hmm. Michael, we went into the operating room, opened the spine, looked at the spinal cord, measured the width, 
and broke off a piece of an old one-edged razor blade. The width of the spinal cord, then half the spinal cord, lift up the spinal cord, put that razor blade into the cord and cut the front half. It worked 85 or so percent of the time for about four years. This is, a, is was it called like a spinalectomy, something like that? It's called chordotomy. Chordotomy, okay. And it got rid of pain on the opposite side of the body, mm-hmm. but 10% of the time you were paralyzed on the same side of the body. 10% of the time you were paralyzed in bowel and bowel. 10% of the time you developed a new pain called postchordotomy dysesthesia, which was like the screaming pain in the world, spontaneous pain everywhere. And 100% of the time, no matter how young or whatever you were, you'd never have another sexual orgasm. You know, other than that, not so bad. Except that four years later, only 8% was still free of pain. Well, pain will find a way to get around the, the, that block. It'll come at exactly. it from all angles. So when that didn't work, we'd go and cut up a hole in the skull and suck out those frontal lobes. Frontal lobotomy. lobotomy. And so I, I was appalled. I, I honestly thought this was beyond human belief. So when I finished medical school, I was on the faculty at Western Reserve, and I spent the next three years studying pain physiology. Mm-hmm. And that's when I came up with the idea that, after all, the brain is electrical. We could relieve pain with electricity. Mm-hmm. And so I started off on the skin, but the problem is some pain is too diffuse or too central. Mm-hmm. And so then we went to the spinal cord, and we can actually stimulate the spinal cord with a, a tiny little pacemaker sort of thing. And so I introduced that in 1966, yep. and all of a sudden, I get, I'm getting 400 people a year sent from around the world for the, cord- for the spinal cord stimulation, but they were so damaged. The average person had five to seven unsuccessful operations, all kinds of cruddy mood drugs, you know, Valium, Percodan, narcotics, and I was only safe, I thought, doing 6% of them Mm -hmm. with the spinal cord stimulation. So I said to one of my colleagues, you know, pain is the thing that takes patients to the doctor more often than anything else, but nobody specializes in pain. And he said, oh, what an interesting idea, but who would ruin his career doing that? Ding, 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 ding. In 1971, I started what we call the Pain Rehabilitation Center. It had never been talked about rehabilitating pain patients Mm -hmm. before. And that's when I began trying what I call active behavioral modification. These people were invalids. Mm -hmm. They wanted to stay in bed all day, that kind of thing. They were on all these drugs. So we got them out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning, wouldn't let them go back to bed till 9 o'clock at night, kept them busy all day, not, you know, heavy duty, just walking, going to physical physical therapy, busy. Yeah. And I was already using an antique electrical stimulator on the skin, the old Electri, invented and patented in 1919. Cumbersome, but it worked. And our first year, Mm -hmm. we treated 400 people who had flunked conventional medicine or whom conventional medicine failed. (laughs) And our success rate was 75% with that kind of active program. That's the year, however, when I then learned about autogenic training and biofeedback, both mm-hmm. at the same time. And in fact, Elmer Green, who introduced biofeedback, called it autogenic feedback training. He always used the words and the images with the temperature uh, device that he was using. So I began to go into other forms of biofeedback. And then all of a sudden... I learned about past life therapy. I had my own first past life experience, and I began doing it on my patients when they needed additional help. This was uh, Dr. Dr. John Elliotson? That is correct. In my immediate last life, Mm -hmm. I was a physician in England named John Elliotson. And the similarities between us are very interesting. He made his reputation talking to the public instead of to physicians. (laughs) And, of course, I've been doing that for the last 40-some-odd years. Uh, He introduced narcotics into London. 
I get people off narcotics. <laughs> um, he also put people into mesmeric trances, and they could make a medical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I started working with medical intuition uh, a year before I even heard John's name. So our similarities are, are quite there. And I have done hundreds of past life sessions. Not everybody needs it. But if you can't make progress with the electrical stimulation, the auditing training, some deep relaxation and guided imagery stuff, then that's an indication to get a past life. That makes sense. So, so going from there, from autogenic training, from biofeedback, how did things progress for you from there? Well, I began, of course, I'm already using electrical stimulation. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and you're really the, fa the father of tents. Exactly. That is true. Uh, and so what I began to realize is what we were missing in medicine was the spiritual. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically what we're talking about is when the mind is not connected with the soul or God, yeah. there's a problem. And that's why in 1978, I founded the American Holistic Medical Association. The biggest purpose was not to avoid drugs and surgery. There's a place for them in acute illness, especially. Yep. In my opinion, in almost no chronic illness are drugs useful. In fact, I think they most often make you worse. And once the original problem has been operated, if, the, if it's indicated, the second and third surgery are not going to make it better. Mm -hmm. They make it worse. So it, that's the time, especially when it's important to assist the individual in getting in touch with the sole purpose. And I, I think that concept of why are you here? Mm -hmm. Now, I know that I came here to help people as a physician, but it doesn't matter. You help people just as much as I do. The man who cleans this room is as important to me as I am, mm -hmm. because otherwise I wouldn't have time to help other people. And so the purpose in life is to help other people, but you must help yourself so that you're not a drag on other people. That makes sense. And, and that's where having a single past life therapy session can sometimes mm -hmm. help somebody break through. I could give scores of examples where that one hour session has been the transformation. What's, what's one short example? A woman came in paralyzed from a gunshot wound through the abdomen. Mm -hmm. She said she'd, quote, shot herself accidentally while cleaning her husband's gun. Yep. I did a session. She gave a history that sounded like Anne Boleyn right out of the textbook, Henry VIII's wife, wow. right up to seeing her head roll when the uh, guillotine fell. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, what does that mean? She was the only person I've ever done this on who was amnesic. She was in deep trance the whole time. So I played back the recording, and she started to cry. She said, I don't know. I said, well, I know. You just told me that you think your husband shot you. You see, she gave me the, the martyred wife. And she broke into tears. She said, I was told when I woke after surgery that I'd shot myself accidentally. The last thing I remember, we were having an argument. So she divorced her husband, got rid of her pain, not a paralysis, but at least got, and went to work as a social worker in a pain clinic. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Healing from the other side. I like it. Exactly. No question about it. And, and I've had other cases just that dramatic. I, one, man, one veterinarian, for instance, I was about to go down and do one of the procedures that I developed back in the early 70s of denovating, take away the nerve supply to the joints in the neck that allow you to move because they are often a cause of major pain. So I did a past life therapy session on him. Pain was gone. Didn't need to go. Ahead. Beautiful. And uh, it, it's interesting. I had uh, I've had a lot of surgeries in my life. I had um, two surgeries that I did uh, through my own hypnosis. Um, I've done that too. And uh, one of them was incredibly successful. The other one was just ugly. But <laughs> <laughs> but the the knee surgery they did it with no no painkiller. I allowed them to do a, a topical before they made the first incision. I said, sure, if you want to put a Novocaine thing in there, go for it. Um, and and then you know I was able to hop off the table afterwards. Yeah. Well, in 1976, 
I was in the Philippines and developed a sinus infection. Never had a sinus infection any other time in my life. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Every sinus in my head. I had to have what's called a sphenoid fenestration. That means you're going through the bone up at the top into the sphenoid sinus. That's the second surgery that did not go so well because I did that <laughs> without any, any anesthetic. Oh, wow. Well, I, I sat there and I said, give me 20 minutes. Yeah. And 20 minutes later, I said, okay, I'm ready. And I could feel them moving. I hear the noise of you crunching bone. Yes. Not one pain. Wow. Be this is so cool. You're the only other person I know that would ever have the gumption to try that. And, and I made it through, but I cannot say I got, I got my concentration broken and I was never able to fully get it back. And yep. the doc said, I've got to I, either, do you want me to stop or I'm going to punch through? And you know, it's like an all and he literally punches through in the crunching bone. Right. You did it. Yep, and and I immediately afterwards, you know, I called Carolyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that one, no, I didn't mean Carolyn. I called Bob Lightman, another intuitive that I know. Wow. Okay, so let's let's go from there. Let's talk briefly about uh, meeting up with Carolyn Miss, and then let's jump with where you are today, all of the rings, DHEA, what what we can do now to work with our health today. Absolutely. Well, I, of course, I began working with highly accurate medical intuitives in 1973. Mm -hmm. I actually had a $50,000 grant from a Fortune 500 company to settle study psychic diagnosis. I can't imagine that today. <laughs> well, they, I could never mention the name in public, which yep. I haven't. Yep. Uh, they wanted my, you know, my uh, consultation, and that's what they paid for it. Mm -hmm. I had a ball. I saw 75 psychics. Yeah. And I learned that these people with no training at all, mm -hmm. on average, were 50 percent accurate, f 10, no, five times chance. Chance was 10 percent. Yeah. Five of them were between 70 and 75 percent accurate. Mm -hmm. And so I began working with that kind of person. And then in 1984, I met Carolyn. And Carolyn is only 90 Let's see, she's 93% accurate. Psychically, that is, psychologically or physically, she could tell you exactly what's going on in the body. Yeah. And Carolyn and I then started working together and have ever since then. And, well, she is excellent. Basically, however, it's not just her medical intuition. To me, again, this brings us back to uh, the commonality, the mm -hmm. spiritual purpose in life. And this brings us to archetypes and all of those aspects of similarities, if you will. Uh, but getting in touch with who you are and sometimes where you've come from. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's really what we enjoy most is teaching people how to get rid of their unfinished business. What does that mean? Unfinished business to me is anger, yep. guilt, yep. anxiety, or depression over anything. It doesn't matter what it is, because some people it's over very minor things. Yep. You know, I say you have nothing over which to feel guilty unless you murder someone or rape someone. You know, forget about it. Now, if you've done those things, you've got to decide how you can repay mm -hmm. yourself and society. But there's no point in wallowing in the manure for the rest of your life. Do something useful. I had a man, 42 years of age, deep depression, and it turned out he had, at age 14, been part of a seat gang and murdered a 10-year-old child. Society says he's paid his debt. He spent 14 years in prison. Mm -hmm. But he's depressed now, came on when his first child was 10, was born uh, 10 years earlier. And I said, look, you spend the rest of your life helping children. That's how you repay society at this point. So it's getting that kind of purpose in life that, to me, is so critically important. And so Carol and I do work on that. In fact, we're, we're trying to decide what to call a workshop we want to do on just this purpose later this year. It is the number one question we get on the show from our listeners is how do I find my life purpose? Then I think we, so I think finding your life purpose is what we need to call it. <laughs>
the last weekend in July. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So fast forwarding from there, can you tell us what the importance is of DHEA? DHEA is the single chemical in your body that will tell you how well you're handling stress. Mm -hmm. At age, by age 25, the average person has matured in that particular hormone, mm -hmm. dehydroepiandrosterone. It is the balancer of cortisone. When you're stressed, you put out cortisone, among other things, yep. and the adrenal gland said, oh, go, come back down. And so there's this dance between DHEA and cortisol all of your life. Interestingly, by age 30, the average person has lost 10% from stress. Mm -hmm. By age 80, the average person has lost 90% of what they had at age 30. Now, if you have a lot of stress, you lose it a lot faster. So I have learned that every known disease, doesn't matter, mental, emotional, physical, doesn't matter. Yep. Every one of them is associated with low levels of DHEA. In a man, it's only one accurate lab, no financial arrangements between us, but I can tell people, don't waste your blood getting it in any lab other than Nichols in Capistrano, California. They're the only accurate lab. Okay. If you're in the upper 50%, which a man is 750 to 1,200 nanograms per deciliter, mm -hmm. that's healthy. If you're a woman, if you're 550 to 980, that's normal. If you're below that level, you've got something wrong. Half of my patients are from the low level, so-called, mm -hmm. to the mid-range, and the other half are even below the lower limit of everybody. I have seen no per patient with any problem who has a healthy level of DHEA. Now, you could take DHEA. The problem is, if you're a woman, there's a slight risk that you're going to aggravate a, a cancer that's lying there already under control. Mm -hmm. And a man, a prostate cancer. On the other hand, the, I discovered starting in the early 90s, the first of four techniques for rejuvenating your own DHEA. The first one was natural progesterone cream. Okay. Now, even at your tender age, mm -hmm. natural progesterone could be a great help in many, many things. Number one, within another five years, you're going to be at the age where some men begin to have enlarged prostate, benign prostatic hypertrophy. Progesterone can help prevent that. It helps prevent testosterone from being converted into dihydrotestosterone, which is the one that helps aggravate BPH or, or cancer of the prostate. Mm -hmm. So natural progesterone was the first one that I discovered. And, and I should mention then for people on, on air, I'm 45, so if you're doing that math. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, um, I, I call that pre-teenage. <laughs> and, um, I and the, like it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, next one that I discovered was if you take a combination of vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams, and MSM or methyl sulfonylmethane, mm -hmm. 1,000 milligrams, that will help restore DHEA. Each of these works 60% over okay. baseline. And uh, so I put that together as Dr. Sheely's youth formula. The um, third one was actually my discovery of a, a circuit in the body that I call the ring of fire. In fact, that was the first of the, in fact, what happened is I sat down one day, what else can I do to raise DHEA mm -hmm. after I finished the others? And I got the message that if I stimulated certain specific acupuncture points, uh, it would raise DHE, and lo and behold, it does. They call that the ring of fire. At that time, I only had very high frequency electrical stimulation. It took 20 minutes to get it done, but it worked. And, and, and you, were a pioneer, you were a pioneer, just to let everybody know, you were a pioneer in using e-stem with acupuncture. Exactly. In fact, I introduced the idea of putting uh, n uh, electrodes onto the needles and that was the introduction of electroacupuncture back in the mid-60s, yes. Love it. And then I discovered that 80% of people are deficient in magnesium, one of the most important minerals in the body. And if you restore magnesium 
through the skin, which is far easier and better than through the mouth or IV, it not only brings your magnesium levels up, but it also raises DHEA 60%. So if you do all four of these, you can raise your DHEA an average of 250% over what you start with. And for most people, that's going to mean right close or into the upper healthy range. Beautiful. And energy above everything. Um, and you mentioned, just to, to kind of take a, a side course, in that section of your book, you talked about people who have temperatures below 98.6, and I typically used to be a lizard myself, it might still be low, that you wanted to add iodine, is that correct? That is correct. Now, that's something I did in the, in the mid-90s. Mm-hmm. I discovered that 80% of my patients had a low temperature. Mm-hmm. And Boda Barnes, one of the great pioneers in thyroid disease, had already decided that was far better than the chemical tests. So if your temperature after you've been out of bed three hours or more Mm -hmm. is below 98.6 orally, you're hypothyroid. And the reason for that is low iodine intake in our food, Mm -hmm. nuclear radiation, Mm -hmm. and, well, just mainly not getting enough. The average person only 15 years ago or more was getting only 150 micrograms a day. And we found that it requires a minimum of 900 up to 1,500 micrograms. That is almost 10 times what the average person is getting. And that would be lots of seaweed, kelp, things of that sort. Where where else would you get that much iodine? You you, you can actually get it. There are two products on the market, Swanson's Triple Iodine Formula Mm -hmm. or Iodoral, I-O-D-O-R-A-L. I like them because they're concentrated. And, of course, today... I don't trust the seaweed because of Fukushima. Yeah. No, I haven't gone there with any of my guests yet, but uh, seeing as I lived in Hawaii for the last four years until recently, I will go there. What are your thoughts as far as uh, what we farm from the sea or what we eat from the sea these days because of that? I I don't like anything that comes out of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. It's contaminated. I've been saying this for at least 60 years, the most stupid thing the human race ever did was invent nuclear energy because we have no way of controlling the waste. I mean, right now we have nuclear power plants in New York, Mm -hmm. North Carolina, and Miami that are leaking radioactivity. And they're not even talking about it. So uh, I'm concerned. But everybody should take some iodine. I recommend one a week. That's all you need. That that will give you uh, about a hundred, about fifteen hundred micrograms a day. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Okay, so going from there back to um, DHEA. Do you want to talk with us about the Ring of Fire? How this came, how these came about, and what the? I'm very curious what the ceremony was that was involved <laughs> with this. Um, well, I, I spent a lot of time on and off of reservation in the past, so I'm, I'm very curious. Well, actually. Uh, I, I, I talk about this easily publicly. I have guides. Mm-hmm. We all have guides probably, but I have ones who communicate with me verbally. I hear them. Is this something that you cultivated over time or they were always there? They were always there, but I didn't know it until the mid-80s. Mm-hmm. I had my first out-of-body experience in 1972. Yeah. And following that, my contact with the other dimension, if you will, was markedly increased. And so I, I, I had my first remembrance of a conversation back and forth uh, in December of 1984. Yeah. But then, so it would happen. Every once in a while, I'd just get a message and, oh, I'm here, sort of thing. In uh, 1994... I had just finished the work on progesterone raising DHEA, but it didn't come up as well as I want. You know, 60%, but not good enough. Mm -hmm. So I said, what else can I do? And out of the blue, Norman, if you would stimulate the points that connect the kidneys with the gonads, with the adrenal glands, with the thyroid, and the pituitary through a window of the sky point, Mm -hmm. it will raise DHEA. And I call my teacher guide, G for guide. And I said, G, there's no point for the pituitary. He said, find one. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, That's simple. 
I got out my acupuncture not, book. I chose. I, I obviously I knew the kid either going to have the thyroid. That was easy, <laughs> and the window of the sky point. And I picked out the point that I thought would control the pituitary, and it worked. And lo and behold, when you stimulate that, even the first time, mm -hmm. 30 to 60 minutes later, your DHEA will come up something. Now, you've got to keep doing it because the, the adrenals are partly burned out. But uh, it's one of the greatest inventions of my life is being able to help restore DHEA naturally. How do we begin to stimulate that? Well, um, I, I now would use a little roll-on bottle. Mm -hmm. I don't happen to have one here. It's, it's, it's a, a fourth the size of this. Can, bear with me one second. I'm going to pause you for a second, and I'm going to grab I'll, yours. And I'll I'm gonna... my, well, I can grab it from here, too. All right. We're both going to do that. <laughs> you show me yours, I'll show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, now... This is the roll-on bottle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not one of the points, but uh, this is one of the big acupuncture points to show you those techniques. So between, uh, between the, the, the foreskin, between the thumb and the forefinger. Yeah, that's hoku, mm -hmm. or large intestine four. You press in, twist like that, and that's twist it. Twist once to the right, once to the left. Yeah, that's just enough to give a little pressure and leave on your hand mm -hmm. there a little drop of the oil. That's enough to stimulate okay. the point. So you start... On the inside of the ankle bone, mm -hmm. behind the ankle bone. Okay. So this will be hard to see on camera, but it <laughs> depends on his flexibility. Oh, I'm a little bit flexible. Uh, still off camera a bit. Uh, still off camera. <laughs> well, <laughs> take the medial. Medial, that's on the inside. Yep. And right behind the bone in that big gap between the bone and uh, the tendon. Between the ankle and the, t and the Achilles tendon, so halfway in between. Exactly. Okay. That's kidney three on both sides. Mm -hmm. Then we won't show this one. <laughs> this is one where even, unless you're married to the other person, you don't touch it. <laughs> you go to the center of the pubic bone. Gotcha. Then you go just one finger breadth below the belly button. And so each, each time when you're describing these points, what you're saying is with this thing that, that's a roll-on bottle of uh, essential oils, you're pressing in, twisting one way, twisting the other. If you don't have the oils, does it benefit you to tap on those points? Yes. It, 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 I would say it's probably half as good. Mm -hmm. You know, halitosis better no breath at all. Okay. <laughs> and, so, and then you go... One inch to the side of the spine directly behind the be belly button. That's mm -hmm. bladder 22. Okay. Those three points, the one just oh, just below the belly button and the two on the side, those are for the adrenal glands That in Chinese cosmology. Then you go on the front of your chest. There's a big bump at the second rib. Yep. In the, and just below that is conception vessel... 18, that's the thyroid point. That's the one most people really need to be stimulating. I guess I'd need that as well. And, of course, then you go to Master the Heart 6, which is just beyond the bone. Mm -hmm. On the wrist. Wrist, right in the center. That's the control point for the sympathetic nervous system. And, of course, the sympathetic overactivity is what burns people out. Mm -hmm. So if you're tapping on that or if you're using the, the uh, bottle on that, that is helping calm it down, take it from SNS to P uh, put us in the parasympathetic? Exactly. And then you go to the window of the sky points. I call them the Frankenstein points in this case. They're the ones just below the mastoid, right in the center of the neck, front to back. Okay, makes sense. And then the final point, the one I chose for the pituitary, because it overlies the pineal, and it also is a wind of the sky point, so it's the connection of body, mind, with soul, uh, is governing vessel 20 right over the very center of the head, above the top of the ears. How much and pressure are we trying to put on these spots? Not pain. <laughs> just enough to get the oil to come out, mm -hmm. to leave just a little drop of the oil, because it does go through the skin. 
and it activates these points better even than electricity or a needle. Wow. So for people, I'm trying to think, for people at home today, if they want to do this before getting their, the oils, can they go on your website and find those particular points? Exactly. They can go to Sacred Rings on my website, and there'll be a description, and then there'll be a, 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 a sketch or photographs of the points. What are the oils? How did they come about, and how are they? why are they so powerful? Just the way everything else that I do comes, intuition. Okay. Just essentially out of the blue. I just sit down and I, I write, <laughs> you and, and 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 then I test. We always test. Um, we um, the first one actually for oil was the Ring of Air, the one that raises oxytocin. The next one, then I went back and got uh, fire for DHEA. Then I did uh, the Ring of Water, which is aldosterone. Aldosterone is the hormone that regulates water and potassium in your body. Mm -hmm. So it's good for edema or swelling. My wife has a swollen left foot since the day after we got married. She broke her foot the day after we got married, and it's still swollen six years okay. later. She needs the Ring of Water. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I had one man whose leg was twice normal size. Yeah. Congenital lymphedema. Within one, it took a month, the whole leg. Within one month, normal leg for the first time in his life. Beautiful. Then the ring of earth is for calcitonin. Now, calcitonin is one of the more interesting ones. Calcitonin keeps your bones strong. It keeps your bones from falling apart, so to speak. So I had, I, I, Norm, I had an interesting dream last night that woke me up in, in a fit. Um, and, and I'd been just been told through, through autonomic writing, which I've just started really practicing, I'd just been told to start journaling my dreams. Wonderful. And I, I woke up from this dream, and I had had, in this dream, I was told by three specialists that I had brittle bone syndrome, and was told because of this, I would die of a heart attack within four to seven years. <laughs> I have. I don't have dreams like this. <laughs> okay, now I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> you need to start using. I think right away. Uh, and you've been through these multiple surgeries that we talked about. I have, and on most recent bone check, as best as they could do, because I have titanium hips, which messes yeah. with everything. They said I was. Um, not the official diagnosis because I'm below 50. They wouldn't give me anything official. It osteopenia was, instead yeah. of osteoporosis. Yeah. Okay. You now, I'm glad you brought that up because here's what you need as a man. Okay. Number one, ring of earth. Mm -hmm. Number two, boron. Boron. Now you, okay. How much do you weigh? Uh, 150. I would say nine milligrams mm -hmm. of boron a day. I would, because of, of this, no calcium, vitamin D3, mm -hmm. 50,000 units once a week. Okay. I would go ahead, again, you're young to do this, but I think it's time to start. I would take Testojack, T-E-S-T-O hyphen J-A-C-K. It helps raise testosterone levels naturally. Yeah. Testo Jack. I've got to ask, where and what is <laughs> Testo Jack? Well, it's it's a mixture of six or seven of the major herbs that help raise testosterone. Okay. The um, you know um, they can find it on my website, or they can find it at some health food stores. It's the best combination of of Muriana Purama and you know a whole bunch of these things that are known to help raise uh, testosterone. Fantastic. Thank you. So, so getting back there, anything else we need to know about these to get started? And then I want to jump into a little bit, just a tiny bit on some other therapies and then have you do a brief meditation. Great. Well, I would then go to the ring of crystal because it lowers free radicals, mm -hmm. 80%. Free radicals are those things, chemicals in our body that are like ozone. They, they, they destroy cell walls and there's nothing even close to this in the literature that will reduce free radicals 80%. So the ring of crystal would do that. And the interesting thing about that is if you keep your DHEA normal mm -hmm. with the four techniques we talked about, you keep your calcitonin normal and you keep your free radicals down, 
it allows the telomeres, the tips of your DNA, to regenerate themselves 3.5% a year instead of losing 1% a year. And for people not familiar with telomeres, I consider them matches. Basically, when you burn out the match that's on the end of your gene, so to speak, you're gone. That's it. Exactly. That's exactly right. And um, if you've got good health habits, they you lose 1% a year. Mm -hmm. But I believe <laughs> that if you've got good health habits and you do those three, three circuits, fire, earth, and crystal, mm -hmm. average life expectancy would be 140 years plus or minus 20. So 120 to 160 instead of average in this country of 78. Wow, and that's, that's huge. So I, I've got to really briefly ask, what did you do with Tesla coils for telomeres? Ah, we can also uh, regenerate them by exposing the body to human DNA frequency. Mm -hmm. 52 to 78 billion cycles a second. It's pretty fast. At a billionth of a watt per centimeter square. And if you allow your body to get that energy mm -hmm. 30 to 60 minutes a day, that will also regenerate telomeres 3.5% a year. Is there any way to do that at home? Yeah. You can build yourself a copper wall, yeah. you know, a roofing, copper three feet wide. Mm -hmm. Put it on the wall. Get yourself a high-voltage Tesla coil mm -hmm. and just hook it to the copper wall and sit in front of it 30 minutes a day. That'll do it. Wild. I think that's kind of cool. All right. Anything else on um, any of the other? We've got, earth, we've got earth. We've got air. We've got water. We've got crystal. Is there one more? Did we get them all? Fire. And I think we got fire. We got them all. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Very good. So what are... You've been at this game a long time. You almost invented this game, we could say, in some way, shape, or form. Um, any other advances um, in holistic medicine or in holistic care that we need to know of, that we need to be doing with ourselves today? Yeah. I call it balancing body, mind, and soul. Mm -hmm. I feel that everybody should spend ideally 20 minutes a day. But once you, if, if you do that consistently for three to six months, you can get by with three minutes a day. And so you need to spend a little time attuning yourself with what I call the real you, the soul. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd love to uh, do a little imagery about that. Let's, let's do that. Let me ask you a couple wrap-up questions first, then we'll do that because afterwards I'm going to be too blissed out, I imagine to do that. <laughs> so first off, any advice you'd give parents for their kids today? Yes. Love them, but help them stay organized. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly simple. Um, and uh, what personally brings you what I call the greatest happiness or the woohoo factor? Oh, friends. Friends. You know, interestingly, I would say other than the meeting of my wife, mm -hmm. I recently met uh, one of my brothers from 1,200 years ago. We were Franciscan brothers with St. Francis. Wow. And um, he's now joined me in medical practice here. Sergei Soren from Belarus, mm -hmm. but grew up mostly in this country. And when we met, it was like, a long lost twin brother. Very, very cool. How but did you? How did you know? I that I I, have, I found three of my Franciscan brothers from those days, and Saint Francis is also reincarnated, and I met him. In fact, he he identified me once from our time together. Everybody, I know this might be a stretch, but if you get the <laughs> chance, get a past life regression. It's kind of mind-blowing <laughs> exactly absolutely so from there any last words of wisdom you would have for people yeah look in the mirror and say i love you i'm okay and it's so important to acknowledge that you are okay i like it yeah and, uh, 
It's something I tell our, our audience often is I have a habit of taking my hand, my right hand, putting it over my heart and going, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. Absolutely. It's important to do that. Henry Rucker, one of the very early intuitive psychics that I met, used to insist that people go to the mirror and say, I love you. I can't see anything more powerful. It's also uh, one of the most difficult things when you start. A lot of people. No. All right. Would you mind leading us then in this? Yes. Now, those of you, hopefully you're not driving. If you are, don't do it right now. <laughs> but ideally, you close your eyes, mm -hmm. you take a deep breath, and you just examine your body. You can tell what's happening in your body. There are only a few feelings. Good. Not so good. Tight even up to pain. So get the feedback from your face, your jaws, your neck and throat, your shoulders, arms and hands, your chest and breasts, your abdomen, your back, your buttocks, pelvis, thighs, calves and feet. And just be aware of those parts of your body which feel good and okay, or uncomfortable or tight, or even you got no feedback. Those are the ones that are out of balance. And just being aware of those now, take some deep, deep breaths. And from the bottom of your feet, right up to the top of your head, collect like a gentle, loving vacuum cleaner, any tension, any part of your body, and blow it away. And do that several times, collecting the tension in each and every part of your body and blowing it out, getting, letting it go, getting rid of it. Breathe in, collect. Breathe out, release. This is an old American Indian technique of preparation for meditation. And once you've done that, love and appreciate your body as the temple in which you live, because that is what it is. And then create an image above you of a magnificent five-pointed sky blue star beaming down upon you, brilliant sky blue light. This is a symbol for your soul. Imagine yourself constantly at all times, 24 hours a day, receiving the light and energy from your soul this wonderful sky blue energy. But know also that even higher in the sky, there's a giant white six-pointed star. And that is a symbol for God. And the six-pointed star is beaming down a golden orange light on the entire universe. And the golden orange comes over the five-pointed sky blue star blends with the blue light and becomes a beautiful purple. And the purple light now comes into the top center of your head. And it moves down through your brain and down the center of your spine all the way to the bottom of your spine and gradually Splits all out through your entire body so that your entire body now is this brilliant violet purple light recognizing your unity with God and soul. And it's a very pleasant way each and every day of reminding yourself that you are a living representative of the divine. And with that knowledge, take a deep breath, open your eyes, stretch comfortably. Uh, <laughs> I've got to ask just before we wrap up your website one more time. Norm Shealy, N-O-R-M-S-H-E-A-L-Y dot com. Thank you so much, Norm. This has been beautiful. You have truly blessed us with your work. I cannot thank you enough. 
For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, check out Living Bliss, and hop on your own holistic path, and shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you, Michael. Great day. <laughs> Blessings. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>